Let's look at tensor calculus, which we'll be using in the Navier-Stokes class. First, we'll discuss tensor-valued functions of a scalar. These are the most basic type of calculus, where the tensor depends on the scalar variable. For example, the time-dependent stress at a point can be represented as a tensor function of time, which we denote as S is S of T. If a tensor T depends on a scalar little t, then its derivative is defined in the usual way as in traditional calculus, as shown in this equation. The derivative can also be expressed in component forms as d dt equals d dt sub ij dt ei outer product ej. The derivative itself is a tensor and the usual rules of differentiation apply. For instance, uh, d dt of t plus b, two different tensors, is dt dt plus db dt. We can also take out functions uh, like alpha from the derivative. We can write uh, a chain rule, a product rule, and the transpose can be brought out of the derivative. For example, consider the time derivative of q, q transpose, where q is orthogonal. Using the product rule and noting q, q, t is the identity, we can write d, d, t of q, q, t equals d, q, d, t, q, t plus q, d, q, t, d, t, which will be d, q, d, t, q, t plus q derivative of d, q, d, t transpose, which will be zero. We can also use the gradient of a velocity field, the so-called grad A, that'd be partial A, partial XJ, outer product EJ, is partial AI, partial XJ, EI, outer product EJ. This is the displacement gradient, which seems uh, familiar, perhaps, to what we discussed uh, in the history of the average Stokes equations earlier in the class. So for example, consider we consider a particle P naught of a body which is deforming, perhaps like a fluid parcel or fluid volume at position X, vector X, relative to P naught. As the particular material derivative forms, these particles will undergo displacements denoted by U of X and U of X plus DX. And the final positions of these particles will be denoted by PF and QF, respectively. Then we can write dx equals dx plus u of dx minus u of x. Using the operations we just defined for tensors, we can write this as dx plus gradient of u of dx. Therefore, the gradient of the displacement field u will map line elements of the undeformed body to those in the deformed body. Here's a graph just to illustrate the concept that we discussed. Here's the initial body or fluid parcel. And here's the final one. And the operation of the deformation are these vectors from the initial two points and the two particular displacement vectors. The whole coordinate system is relative to x. Let's look more at the tensor calculus. Suppose another example that u1 equals k x2 squared and u2 e and u3 are 0 in the velocity field. Then the gradient of u will be partial ui partial xj and which will be equal to this tensor equals 2kx2e1 outer product e2. A particular line element dx will be dxiei at x equals xiei, and this will map dx equals dx plus 2kx2e1 outer product e2 dx1e1 plus dx2e2 plus dx3e3. This will all reduce to dx plus 2k dx2 dx2 E1. Let's talk about the gradients, divergence, and Hessian of tensor calculus. The gradient of the tensor field 
can be written as gradient of the tensor T as partial T partial XK with the outer product of EK, which will go as partial T IJ partial XK EI EJ EK. The divergence can similarly be written as the divergence of the tensor T, which is the gradient of T with the identity tensor, which will be partial Tij, partial Xj, Ei, which is the index notation form. Finally, the Hessian is nabla outer product of nabla, which goes as partial to partial Xi, partial Xj with Ei, outer product of Ej. There's a number of identities that can be used, and here's their traditional form and written out on the right in a simplified form or expanded form. So these might be used through the course once in a while, especially with respect to the tensor quantities here. Finally, let's look at the divergence theorem. The arbitrary differentiable tensor field might be T, I, J, et cetera, K, in three dimensions X and time T. Let S denote uh, divergence, excuse me, let S be a closed surface bounding a volume V in the space with an outward normal to S, and that outward normal will be N. The divergence theorem of Gauss states that the surface integral of T, I to K, and K unit normals over the surface S goes as the volume integral of partial T, I to K, partial X, K, dV. For second order tensors, which are in fluid dynamics and what we're most concerned of, this can be written as the surface integral of the tensor field. T, with its normal derivative on the surface goes as the divergence T in the volume. Written in index notation, that's the surface integral Tij nj ds goes as the partial derivative of Tij xj dv. So many of these things are learned in calculus three, uh, written out just with simple vector notation, and here we've written it in tensor notation.